In today's video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my remodeled studio, which I took from this cluttered mess to what you see here. I'm also gonna walk you through some of the equipment that I use to film and edit and show you what goes into making the videos that you see here on YouTube. So if you wanna learn all about that and more, keep watching. One of the things that I wanted to achieve with the studio remodel was change the look and the feel of the room. So we added this plank board wall to the back, which gives a nice rustic look, also works great for YouTube backgrounds, and then painted these side walls this slate gray color. The next piece, which was a must, was getting a new desk. The older desk that I had was very small. It also wobbled back and forth and shook a little bit when I drew on it, so you could see that in the videos. So this one is actually a huge six foot workbench that I got at Menards, has a 3,000 pound weight capacity, and is just perfect for drawing on. Gives me tons of room to work and looks great in the videos. For lighting, I use a three-point lighting setup. This one here is the key light. It's set closer to the desk at a 45 degree angle to the right. Further back on the left set up higher is the fill light and then behind me is the backlight. As far as the lights themselves goes, I use the newer 660s. These are LED light panels and these things are great. Got a power cord here and I love these because you can actually adjust with the dimmer switches, the yellow and white balance, which makes these really nice. They've also got these slots over here that you can put batteries in them. If you want to take these on the road, you don't have to use the power. They also have the barn doors here on the front so you can slide these back and forth to direct the flow of the light out of the actual panel. I also have smaller tabletop soft boxes. These are made by Linko and these are great because I can angle these down if I need more light working on the table or I can angle them up and use them as fill lights for the background. Turning on and off this many lights can be a pain but I've got that solved with smart switches and hues so hey Alexa, turn off YouTube lights. And you'll see all five turn off, makes it really nice. All the tall LEDs are on smart switches. Hey Alexa, turn on YouTube lights and they fire right back up. The soft boxes are actually using hue lights. To film my videos, I use the Sony a6400. It's a DSLR-C. When I first started YouTube, I just used my iPhone and upgraded to this later. This has got the 18 to 105 G series lens on it right now, but I also use the 35 millimeter Sony lens. This is a fixed lens, which gives you a really nice depth of field. So if you watch previous videos of mine, the intros and outros that look like this has that really blurry background. That's the effect you can achieve with that lens. So I also have the camera housed in this cage made by Small Rig. This is nice because it adds extra protection but you do have these cold shoe mounts that you can get that you can add a mic or lights to the top and then these are repositionable too so based on your shooting needs you can move those around i've also got the wood grip here on the front so if you are shooting in handheld mode it makes the camera a lot more comfortable and then the mics attack star under 30 dollars just fantastic sound quality for the price and highly recommended to film the overhead portions of my tutorials, I use this articulating arm by Heron, and this thing is fantastic. You'll see here, I've got it mounted over to the side on this bookcase away from the table. This can extend down and up to get you exactly where you need to be for your shot. The thing to remember here is if you get an arm, always mount it away from the table. You'll see there's some shakes here. If you've got this mounted to your drawing surface, you're gonna constantly have that vibration in your shot, and it's not gonna turn out that well, so move it away. The A6400 also has video out. So you'll see here, I've got an HDMI adapter plugged into the camera, running up here to the HDMI cord, which then runs into my TV off to the side. So I can be drawing down here on the table and look up to the right on the TV and see exactly what you guys are gonna see. Make sure that everything is in frame, everything is in focus. And this TV, just a really cheap, basic Element 4K TV that I picked up during Black Friday for only 175 bucks. So it makes it super convenient to make sure everything looks great. In addition to the hair and arm, I also use a tripod. Uh, this I use for front-facing camera views, so anytime I do intros or outros, this is made by KNF Concepts, and it's a little bit different than a regular tripod. You'll see the centerpiece extends up and then out and over. You can also slide this back in on itself for kind of a counterweight and a balance, but this is nice because you can kind of get this over the shoulder, overhead shot. If you watched my Vans video previously, this is what I use for that side view, and it really gives you a lot more versatility for your angles. I edit my video with Premiere Pro on my MacBook Pro. This is a 2019 model, eight core i9 processor with 16 gigs of RAM, J5 USB-C hub here in the back. MacBook only has USB-C, so this allows me to hook up my XP Pen graphics tablet along with my monitor, which is a 29 inch ultra wide made by LG. Also mounted to the bookcase is this Blue Yeti microphone. I use this for any voiceover work like I'm doing now or for live streams. You can see here it's got the scissor arm along with the shock mount and the pop filter as well. 
Last but not least, we have the bookcase itself, really just houses various camera and computer accessories. So I've got different mounts, spare batteries, lights, I've got my headphones, my XP pen, graphics, tablet, Joby Gorilla Pod at the bottom, along with my crane gimbal. All right, guys, so that's it for my studio tour video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, found the peek behind the scenes informative, as well as maybe a little inspirational. With the things going on in the world today, if you guys have maybe some extra time on your hands, you're looking for an outlet for that creativity, think about starting a YouTube channel. If you've got a desire, if you've got some talent to share with the world, what are you waiting for? So when I first started YouTube, I just used a basic $10 iPhone mount like this. You can use it with any phone and recorded just straight off of that so you don't have to have all the fancy equipment. Really, you just have to have something that you want to share with the world. And now's your time. As I mentioned in previous videos too, I do have a group for art on Facebook called Keep Creating a Learn, Draw, Share Art Community, which I will link it in the description below. If you start a channel, feel free to share any of the videos in the group. I know other people would love to see the work that you're coming up with, and that's a platform that you can use right off the bat to get your work out there. So make some art, make a video, share it with the group, share it with the world. I want to see what you guys can come up with. I know I covered the equipment that I use in today's video pretty quick, so if you want to learn more about any single product featured in today's video, I do have a link down in the description below to an Amazon page. Basically made a page solely devoted to everything that I use to film that you see in today's video, so if you want to hop over there and check it out, I'll link that in the description below. Those are affiliate links, so any purchases made through there definitely help out the channel. So that's it for the video. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video too, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. For me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.